Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, the holiday weekend is upon us. The legislature is gone. Indictments. Uh, colas for legislators. Could that be on the table? How about, well, talking about table, table games? Where are table games? And then the rate caps for electricity are about to come off. Are your electric bills going to go up? Do we have the folks here to explain what will happen with that? We'll be back in a moment. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, joining me for a little legislative update, as often is the case, is John Meisick. He's sitting across from me from the Allentown Morning Call and Tony Romeo, KYW, KDKA Radio. Journalists all, some of the state's leading reporters are here to give us the insight. All right, guys. Let's get inside these indictments before we do table games and colas. Uh, John Meisick, 10 Republicans, people said, well, maybe it would happen, maybe it wouldn't. But inside the 188-page presentment by the grand jury were some fascinating elements about what was going on deep inside the bowels of the Republican caucus. What was that all yeah, about? It's, it's not your grandfather's campaign anymore, is it? No, I mean, no. This gigantic 188-page indictment made public by Attorney General Tom Corbett, himself a Republican, uh, two weeks ago, detailing the lengths to which, allegedly, House Republicans, led by then-Majority Leader and Speaker John Prezell, went to ensure their own re-election and political fortunes. Computer programs, slicing and dicing of statistical data, programs that could predict whether people had gone to the polls, tell whether, you know, and once they had gone, how they had voted, whether they favored John Prezell. Yeah. Um, just, just incredible. Long gone are the days when you'd send yeah. some ward healer out to grab grandma from the house. It's yeah, somebody said, Tony, that this was sort of the, if, if the other aspects of the first indictments with the Democrats were about Boots on the on the ground. This was about techn technocratic stuff, right? Well, the attorney general himself pointed that out. Of course, he chided us for having name, having uh, dubbed Called the investigation bonus, bonus gate. gate. Yeah. That's because, of course, the first ra round was primarily about uh, you paying bonuses to staffers yeah. for doing campaign work. Although, generally, about you're giving... not calling them bonus gate anymore, are you? You have a new name for it, like <laughs> the, techno, actually, techno gate. Maybe actually, if I'm not, not gate mistaken, gate. I, the general was asked, you know, what should we call this? He said, I don't know. That's up to you. <laughs> yeah, he did say But that. of course, this round. Yes, is about uh, technology contracts for technology as opposed to uh, you know human hands yeah. and feet. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I thought was pretty fascinating was the degree to which the, the in this case the Republican leader John Purcell had gone after members of his own party who who were not on board. I mean, Representative Kurt Schroeder, Schroeder from Chester County and uh, Will Gabick, I guess, from Cumberland County and. Uh, John Barley, who was the appropriation chair. What, what, well, I thought it was fascinating that, he, that used, he used those annoying robocalls, allegedly. <laughs> uh, he had uh, you know, these robocalls that went out to people, those people you mentioned, those representatives yeah. in their home districts. So in a way, he was not only going after members of his own party, but he was annoying um, people, voters in, in those districts. Yeah. Okay, let's sort of switch dimensions of this. Look, look, looking forward, everyone now is trying to figure out whether it's the end or will there be additional indictments? He said that he being the attorney general at the uh, at the press conference that they had now done two caucuses, which leaves in theory two to go. But maybe there's some stragglers that will come along there. I mean, it, it, I, you know, maybe you don't have a good answer for this, John, but is it likely given what all that you've found out, you reporters, that there will be additional indictments. It's, you know, it's hard to say never in cases like this. Yeah. You don't want to. You know, you know, the investigation is not over until Mr. Corbett calls time on it. You know, there yeah. are two. There are two caucuses left. To go, it, yeah. You know, the Senate Republicans and Senate Democrats. Presumably, they are being looked at. I think we know that the Senate Republicans were served some papers or received. Mm -hmm. You know, were, are being looked at. So, you know, it's hard to close the books on this. And then there, are, you know, reports about sort of sub grand juries investigating mm -hmm. other areas of state government, the yeah. Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission, the Gaming Control Board. It's just this many tentacled yeah. beast. Well, now, and also, you know, don't forget, there could be more charges against the two caucuses that have already been hit. We know that. In the first round of charges against House Democrats, we know that some of those people have made deals and are cooperating. Good so, point. Good so there point. may be yeah. more coming on that. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, and that happened in fact in the first round. Mr. Corbett went back for another bite at the apple. Mike Vion and his former top aide faced a second round of charges related yeah. to a, a nonprofit that, right. that he let, operated. Let, let me go to one final question before we move on to another topic. He, the Attorney General has come under a lot of criticism, both from Democrats and Republicans, that he should resign. 
that there's a kind of conflict of interest inherent in in his job. In your reporting, how serious do you think that argument is? And if so, should it apply to everybody? I mean, why not the Auditor General? Why not if we have, I mean, we have no state law that compels them to require. Tony, what, I mean, what are you hearing about that? I mean, you've reported on it. Is it a I think serious? I think it's a hot topic in some quarters. Yeah. Obviously, you have a couple of gubernatorial candidates, Tom Knox, the Democrat, yeah. and Jim Gerlach, the Republican, who are hitting on this uh, theme over and over again. You have some activists. I don't know that there's a huge a grassroots, a grassroots yeah. uh, uh, sense. Is it, I mean, sense it, it, is, it is potent politically. Jim Gerlach, the Republican challenger to Mr. Corbett and the governor of Texas, has made a point out of this repeatedly. But it goes to the delicacy, I think, of Mr. Corbett's position. You mentioned Jack Wagner. What Mr. Wagner, also running for governor, releases audits critical of state government, yeah. which rarely result in, in, in actual change. The, where you get into problems is, is Mr. Corbett's prosecutorial powers, where he's yeah. raising money yeah. from, from people whom he might very, well have, not, to, right. very, very well have to prosecute. R right. So he's on a... Uh, it's a, a slightly different playing field. Yeah, and, and, and he's on a... There's a delicate balancing act there. All right, when we come back... Uh, table games, are we closer? It's, it's, they say it's, 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 it's needed to balance the budget. Some say no, no, the budget's okay. And the state related are still Penn State. You're going to hold Penn State hostage. We'll be back with that and more following these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is sponsored by Citizens to Protect PA Jobs. When businesses add jobs, people prosper. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by PAConstructionJobs.com. For more information about rewarding careers in the highway construction industry, visit PAConstructionJobs.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program with John Mysick and Tony Romeo, reporters all. All right, guys, I want to I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about table games, 200 and plus million on the ta on the table, so to speak. They say it's necessary to balance the budget. Some Republicans say no, but the state related universities are hostage. And there's now talk about tuition hikes at some of these schools as a result of it. Uh, John, let me start with you. Any movement any closer to getting this table games deal? There were, there were a pair of meetings in the last week uh, between House and Senate leaders, uh, which we're told were encouraging but didn't result in any actual resolution. Uh, coming into the holiday week here, the House and Senate are away, uh, so there yeah. there won't, that precludes any legislative action, which is not to say the discussions won't continue. Um, but, you know, the, the, the talks are continuing, but what is striking here is seemingly is the, with the funding for Penn State holding in, in you know, sort of in limbo and the, the state relates, is the actual lack of urgency. Boy, i got to tell you what, how could you, like, Penn State, you're going to keep their money? I mean, don't they understand the power of Penn State, Tony? And, of course, down in, you got Temple, one of your stations, you know, down in Philly, and you got Pitt, right? University of Pittsburgh out in another one of your stations. Go ahead. Now, what's interesting here, of course, is the debate as to whether this is necessary or not. The Senate yeah. Republicans say it's not necessary to have table games passed, and you can go ahead and pass what they call the non-preferred appropriations. Right. The governor's position is it doesn't matter either way. It's part of the budget deal. It all needs to get done at the same time. Yeah, yeah but look... If they didn't do it. They're not doing it before Thanksgiving, which is coming up. They have a brief period of time before the big holiday season starts. Is it possible that this thing won't even get done no, then? No, it's always possible. I mean, I, mean, I well, on October 9th when the budget was signed, there was so much happy talk. How do you remember that date, by the way? <laughs> well, when you live through that uh, tor torment <laughs> for 101 days, days the date is in, etched in your mind. But... Uh, on that day, there was so much happy talk about how yeah. Table Games was going to get done in the next week, and I chuckled to myself. It's, nothing gets done like that up here of any importance. I did actually circle the day before Thanksgiving on my yeah. calendar as, as a, a timetable when it might, and even that's going to get uh, apparently now, blown back. Go, go, go ahead. We had Senate John. Minority Leader Bob Mello, who was caught on camera from Lackawanna County earlier this week, by telling telling some, telling an audience that this may, may very well be end up being a Christmas present a, for, a, for Pennsylvanians. A Christmas, a Christmas present. All right, well, we'll see. See, we, as Tony said, 101 days, we still didn't get the budget done. All right, here, John, we're going to go into another one of these controversies, and that is the scheduled cost of living increase for the legislature and the judiciary. Here we are in the midst of a recession with some folks not getting any pay raises, and they have this pay hike that they automatically get, which is a COLA attached to the Philadelphia inflation rate, if my memory, you'll correct me. Yeah. 
What is going to happen uh, here? Mrs. Now? It comes just a couple of days after 319 state employees were handed their pink slips. So happy Thanksgiving to those poor people, right? But, yeah, I mean, this happens every year at about this time. The CPI data from, Greta, from Greater Philadelphia comes out. They take a look at it. They crunch their numbers. And in most years, they end up with, a, you know, a two-point-something percent mm -hmm. bump in their salaries mm -hmm. for lawmakers, the judiciary, and the governor. Um, as we sit here today, these numbers, recording this, these numbers are being computed. And I'm told there's actually an outside chance it would be a, that there might be a dip in the CPI. And if that happens, that means no raises. Um, well, they, they would, Tony, Tony, <laughs> Tony, you've been around a long time. Given what happened in July of 2005, there's no way there'll be a, a, a movement to increase their pay by legislative action, is there? Well, yeah, I guess. No, I mean, it, anything's possible with no, this legislature, no, 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 but no, I would but, say if there's anything that would seem to be impossible, that would be it. I mean, this comes in a year, mind, when Social Security recipients yeah. aren't getting a cost of living adjustment. Yeah. That's, how, that's how toxic that would be. Yeah. Well, I agree. All right. Well, look, I want to thank you guys for coming on. Great, great update. We're, uh, electric rates, the caps are scheduled to come off. There's a big debate about what should be done about that. We have a couple of great guests who are going to chat with us about that. We'll see you uh, after the other side of a commercial break. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, the electric uh, rate uh, caps are scheduled to come off. Are people's bills going to go skyrocketing high? We couldn't have two better guests to talk about that. Joining me in the studio is Jim Cawley. He's the chairman of the Pennsylvania Utilities Commission. And Richard Hudson, Jr., he's the Pennsylvania chair of the Retail Energy Supply Association. I got that right, didn't I? Yep. I know. I'm reading it. It was easy to do. All right, Jim, look, you're, no one knows better than you, no one we could have on this program better than you to explain this situation about the electric rate caps coming off. Let's start. The caps were put on when and why? They were put on in, uh, at the end of 1996. Uh, this is the generation, what the actual electricity part of the bill. Right. Uh, as opposed to the distribution side. Okay. In 1996, and uh, they were capped at 1197 levels until the electric distribution companies could recover their stranded investments in their generation assets. You were going to let somebody else sell the electricity. They had all of this redundancies in their generation assets. So uh, we've, we've had the, the generation part capped for a dozen years now. And that affects the rates? Well, it does be, uh, because you, you effectively have been, had subsidized electricity. All right. Okay. So we got, now, the rates are coming off, and that means what to electric rates for all of our viewers? Well, for, for uh, PPL customers, residential customers, it's going to mean a 30% increase. The good news is you don't have to, uh, to put up with that. You, you, there are ways that you can reduce your, uh, your electricity portion of your bill. Uh, the companies that, that Rich uh, represents uh, are jumping into this market. Uh, so in other words, you could, you could switch companies if you want. You, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the companies that I represent are competitive retail electricity suppliers. We're the new guys on the block that are looking to come in and compete for customers' business. Okay. But... You could stay with PPL. Well, you could, but you'll pay 10 or 15 or 20 percent more than you, you, ha you, you, you would have to. By the simply sending in a postcard or picking up the phone, you can save 10 or 15 percent, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's very easy. You, you'll now, get a now, full disclosure here. I'm a PPL customer, and I did this savings plan, which they said we could pay a little more, and then they invested in interest, and then that would be used to when the rates go up. It, did I make a mistake there? No, you didn't. I 140,000 of PPL's customers signed up for the prepayment, wow. including me. 
Including uh, you. Well, there's six percent interest, uh, and you get Not your money more back than the banks, want, right? If you want to get out of it, I, I might add, you uh, might add uh, uh, Penelec customers mm -hmm. uh, can do the same thing: build yeah. up some Christmas Club yeah, credits, have, if you will, and get seven and a half percent on your money. This, this is, uh, it's, it sounds as it's too good to be true, but it isn't. Now, now ex explain to me, uh, RESA, uh, that, that's the ac ac acronym for Retail Energy Supply. What, what's, what's the Retail Energy Supply Association? Well, we're a group of competitive electricity suppliers. Um, we serve customers, residential, small business, large business customers here in Pennsylvania and across the country. And we support a vibrant competitive market for electricity. It's really just the American way. We like choice mm -hmm. in the type of car that we drive, choice in where, do we, where we go to the movies, choice in where we go on vacation. And ultimately, customers will enjoy having a choice in their electricity generation service provider as well. Yeah, one, one of the, okay, let's, do the companies that, that you could possibly, you, know, you switch a company, what about the companies who are losing the business? Is supplying electricity to homeowners a huge deal now for some of these big companies, or are they doing other things? PPL doesn't care. Uh, PPL they, they, doesn't care. This doesn't is care. big news. Go ahead. Well, they don't, they don't care because they have they make their money on the regulated distribution of the electricity. They're the wires company. If you don't go out and get a, a, your, your electricity itself from a company that Rich represents, uh, they'll, they'll go get it for you as the default supplier, but you'll pay 10 or 15% more for it because they have to go get it way ahead of time to make sure that it's there. PPL does not care. They are indifferent to where you get this power. Uh, and, and way, that's this why is, you I'm, You know, I, I've been doing this show for a long time. We've done a lot of shows on energy and electricity. But I never had it explained that way. Maybe I'm dumb. <laughs> Some people would think that. Yeah. Explain that in, from your point of view. Sure. Well, the great thing about the transition to competition is it's really a win-win-win all around. As the chairman mentioned, um, it's a win for PPL because they're, they can now focus on their core business model, which is maintaining a reliable electricity grid. Yeah. It's a win for consumers because they have access to these uh, lower cost options, more innovative products and services. And it's a win for companies that I represent because we get to come in and compete for customers' business. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to run to break, but bef before I do, but PP&L will still maintain the, I want to use the wrong word, the electric system, the grid. I mean, mm -hmm. they will still maintain it even if you go to one of your other suppliers. Is that correct? Exactly. Um, Did I state that right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. It's just the generation portion of the bill that's been it. deregulated, and now customers have a choice in their generation service provider. But PPL, that's still the company that you call if your lights go out, they're still going to maintain a reliable electricity grid. And you're still going to get one bill from PPL that will include the PUC regulated right. distribution charges, and it will include the charges from the alternative supplier that you're getting a lower price it. from. All right. Well, it's a, I'll tell you what, it's a learning experience on this program every week. We'll be back in a minute. We're going to continue this discussion on the other side of some paid commercials. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Penn Future, where we believe that every environmental victory grows the economy. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. We're talking about the electric rates, and there's a whole series of dimension to this with Jim Cauley. He chairs the PUC, and Rick, Richard Hudson, he's the Pennsylvania chair of the Retail Energy Supply Association. Well, uh, Jim, let me ask you this. I mean, we are on the verge then of sort of a, a huge changes, not just, you know, the th things that we talked about, um, the point you made the moment ago about, you know, PP&L and supplying versus maintaining. And, but the bigger point here is that ultimately we're going to have a wider variety of choices for energy than we've ever had before probably in history, right? One of the uh, ideas the legislature had was to give, as a part of choice, that you would get green products, for instance. You would yeah. get a fixed price. You'd be able to lock in a fixed price for a year. 
and the legislature ha is forcing the electric distribution companies to reduce usage in their territories so we don't have to build as many power plants and transmission lines. So at the same time that you're seeing these rate caps expire, you're, you're also going to be seeing your electric company uh, offering you uh, discounts and rebates on, on appliances and uh, free CFL so other, bulbs. So in other words, that means if you go buy these energy efficient appliances and you make, or, or will it just be for every, make some changes in your lifestyle, we'll put it that way, you know, your energy creating lifestyle, you're going to benefit, take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. Just like competition revolutionized the telecommunications industry, you now have things like the BlackBerry where you can get internet on your telephone. You'll start to see the same types of technological innovation for the electric industry as well. There's been a lot of talk about smart meters and smart grid technology. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to fully capitalize on this technological innovation unless you give customers choice in their um, energy service provider. Yeah, now, the, what has the PUC been I mean, your job is to be sure that the laws are imp that these that the laws are implemented fully and fairly. Go ahead. Well, it is because the legislature has given us the task to make sure that the electric companies reduce usage by one percent by 2011 and three percent by 2013. Mm -hmm. we, and uh, customers are going to be paying for these efforts. So we were given the task of making sure that the benefits are going to outweigh the cost. So mm -hmm. customers are going to be helping paying for all these energy usage reduction efforts. They should take advantage of them. So if they if they're going to re replace a major appliance in their home or put in a programmable thermostat so remember you're going in the holiday season when you buy but mm -hmm. but when you I go out I notice that so many of the products are advertised that way anyway right I mean I mean you know as energy efficient and uh, uh, go. Well, we're moving into a whole new arena um, it's really a paradigm shift in the way customers should be thinking about energy we're starting to empower customers so they can make choices mm -hmm. in the type of appliances they buy they can make choices in their energy service provider ultimately to lead to wiser smarter cleaner and greener energy use mm -hmm. now final, final final word on this how long is this is an evolution that's going to take years, I would think, to bring into fruition. Well, for the PPL service territory, you're going to start. Well, you're going to start seeing efforts immediately uh, for energy reduction, new CFL bulbs, rebates. Uh, mm -hmm. They'll take away your old refrigerator. They'll give you rebates to help you buy a new one, mm -hmm. help you replace your your heating and cooling systems. Uh, the people ought to be ready you for got, this, and they ought to welcome it. All right, we want you guys to come back in a couple of months and give us an update on this. All right, thanks, as always, for watching uh, the program, and uh, as always, you all stay well.